Hey, this is Bryant from The Cupboard in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today on The Cupboard Presents Artist Insights, we're at The Cupboard to talk with Bob Snodgrass. How long have you been blowing glass? Okay, without doing math, I'm going to go and say my first experience was in 1971. And is, you spent a lot of time on tour with the great... Oh, I got to... Wait a minute, I got to take that back. Mr. Nafee's Lab Class, where we made stirring rods for roasting marshmallows. That was my first class. And you spent a lot of time on tour with the dead, correct? I bumped into the Grateful Dead. See, I was touring and living in a bus with my family, doing festivals of all different varieties, hot air balloon show, mushroom festival, whatever, all over the country. And it wasn't until 87 that I went to my first Grateful Dead concert. So after that, I started going to more Grateful Dead concerts and a lot less other type festivals. And people at the hot air balloon shows wondering where I am, I'm here now. <laughs> so I was making a pipe quite similar to the skull. I called it Mr. Happy. It had red lips and colorful eyes and I'm thinking, well, every festival I did, I always tried to come up with something to be part of the theme. And I was walking across the parking lot in San Diego, and ah, I got it. I'm gonna take Mr. Happy and put teeth on him and leave his eyes clear. And that became the top hat. Is there anything that you're doing now that you haven't done before? Yeah, we're working out of crucibles where we actually are using a metal blowpipe and making a glass blank, maybe the, uh, three or four inches long, and then putting that onto the blowpipe and picking it up out of the crucible. You dip and you've got to gather. Sometimes second gather will be this big. So we're doing things that are much larger than I was able to do with just a torch awesome place. In fact, uh, I might have come to this store in the early 70s uh, when Chuck Murphy and I were hopscotching all over Ohio and this part of the country. Oh, it's a spectacular little place. I, I, I like the antiqueness and, and just there's so much to look at. It's a great place. And, and your people are all cool. So. What a, what a fun place to work, I expect. Oh, Dragon in a Tube. <laughs> What's that? Uh, it's a pipe inside a tube, and when it's smoked right, this thin cylinder of smoke will travel up and surrounded by a cylinder of cool air, and it fools your lungs, and you don't think you've inhaled anything, and then you're sitting there fantasizing, blowing these little smoke rings out of the dragon, and it's, it's more than a pipe, it's a toy. Hey, I've spent a whole night coming up with one pair of matching eyes. Uh, I mix the color for it, usually from scratch, and so I put a lot of special effort into making one of those. And success rate's not anywhere near 100%. Hey, I'm gonna be teaching a class at Cornerstone this year. It'll be on November. Uh, I won't be doing another class until probably after December next year. So, uh, How long do those classes usually run? Um, my typical class is three to five days. And I start people out with, if they're a beginner, the first thing they're learning to do is make color from scratch. And this blending and making color from scratch lets them acquire a feel and start to understand how the glass is moving and it's not a demand to let's make this. You're learning to understand the media and from there we, we expand and before day three's up you've made a skull marble and maybe your teeth aren't as straight as mine or as small as mine but they uh, end up getting things that I've had people come back and say wow I took your class like seven years ago and just the other day 
something popped out of the blue that I remembered you told me first, and it's still coming out of, out of the cracks in the woodwork. So typically I, I show you how to make colors, but it, uh, we use colors for accent or making a marini. But other than that, I don't use much color. Uh, I like the transparency. It allows me to see the inside wall, the outside wall. I can make nice uniform pieces. If that's all one solid color and I can't see through it, how do I know I've got the inside working the way it should? And so I use color. Oh, color's also more brittle. So they don't bounce near as well as something that's fumed. And uh, we tend to always be a little bit clumsy one time or another. <laughs>